Curry, Mr. Bejeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Remove spoiled food from the refrigerator. Somebody with dementia does not have the, not only is the eyesight affected, but their tastes are affected. So they're not going to be able to know that the milk that's been in the refrigerator for three months is gross and um, bad. So somebody, caretaker, just go through the refrigerator, get rid of everything that's expired. Install childproof latches we talked about, but install them on all cabinets and drawers, especially with anything breakable that you want to keep. Cleaning products, medicines, alcohol, matches, knives, sharp utensils, plastic bags, and that famous family junk drawer. Because you may know what all that stuff is that you have in that drunk drawer, junk drawer, but somebody with Alzheimer's will not, and that could get easily injured by it. We also recommend that you remove all hand tools, power tools, guns, machinery. Remove them to a locked garage a basement or shed, but get them out of sight and lock them up. Stairs, another issue. We talk about, in my other presentations, we talk about the uh, stair lifts, but here is something very simple to do. Install a, chair, a, a gate at the top of the stair and a gate at the bottom of the stair because somebody with Alzheimer's who doesn't have the ability to climb that stair by themselves right now isn't going to be able to with the gate in the way. And when they're upstairs, they're not going to be able to go downstairs and get injured. Bathroom. I'm a proponent, I've always been, of putting a grab bar in every bathroom in America. Whether you're three or 103, it's a wonderful product to keep you safe if it's installed correctly. Um, we talk about, again, monochromatic colors. A toilet seat. Think about it. A white toilet with a white toilet seat. Somebody who's having visual problems isn't going to know where to go. So very simple fix, get a color D cover. Very simple, it's going to show you exactly where you need to go. Um, we talked about removing medicines before, same thing in the bathroom, You're cleaning products, shaving equipment, remove it. Or be there present when somebody's using an electric razor or a straight razor. Label your hot and cold levers because you're not going to remember which side was hot and which side was cold. Shampoos and conditioners. Another thing we recommend is a very simple little fix. You can go to, again, Toys R Us or um, any kind of store, a foam cover for the tub spout. It's a very cheap product. But it does save you if you slip and fall in the tub. It will mi help minimize the danger. It won't prevent it, but it will help minimize it. And we also recommend anti scalds um, as we get older, our skin gets a little thinner, so you feel that hot water a little more and it's more easily to burn. So an anti-scald device, you can put them on your sink faucets, your tub faucets, um, and you can set the temperature on them so that it's an exact temperature, it won't go anymore and you won't get burnt. Lighting. We talk about installing lighting everywhere. Night lights from the bathrooms to the kitchens, everywhere. It's a little pathway, almost like a airplane coming down, you know, on a runway, well, a nice lighted pathway to get to the bathroom. We also recommend sometimes arrows or strips of, of tape to help you go down the, the hallway. Reduce glare. Again, we talked about the visual perception. Somebody will see some glare on the table, the counter, they're going to think that's a water hole, that, that it's a lake or a hole with water filled into it. So we recommend that you try to reduce glare on your counters and your floors and your windows. Make sure and install adequate lighting throughout the home and especially outside at your front entrance. Smoking. We shouldn't smoke anyway, but there are people who do. So what do we do to minimize the danger? Always be present when somebody is smoking because they won't remember that they lit a cigarette and they could put it down and there could be an issue. But again, here's with the memory. If you remove the presence of the cigarette, the pipe, the, t um, the cigar, the matches, everything that goes along with that, out of their sight, they not, may not remember that they smoke. And therefore, they'll be a little healthier for it. Red tape. Red tape is always a big red flag to stop. Red is a big <coughs> color. We tell you, put red tape around floor registers or heat units because the person won't go near it. They'll stop. They won't touch it. <coughs> 
eliminate trippable hazards other than electrical cords, such as hoses outside. Sometimes you go and you're watering your garden, you leave it down, it becomes a triple hazard. Remove them out of the pathways, clear your clutter. Install secure locked gates around your pools, your yards, your sheds. Cover and lock your garbage cans. Because again, somebody with dementia will see a garbage can, open it up, and think that's something that might be edible, and start to eat it. And keep small pets out of walkway paths, because they will cause another trippable hazard. That person with somebody has a visual perception, a little kitty cat on the floor, it's either going to get stepped on or tripped over. Hello, Thunder. <laughs> Notify police, neighbors, and relatives. <laughs> A potential wander, we may not be getting home tonight. <laughs> of the potential to wander and give them a recent picture. So if somebody that you are friends with next door, say, if you see my loved one outside walking, please notify me or bring them back to me or call the police if they don't want to get involved. Tell your police, give them a current picture. We also recommend that you keep an article of clothing of your loved one nearby your door in a plastic bag, unwashed because it will help the um, dogs, the tracking dogs, pick up their scent very quickly. Personal emergency response systems, Alzheimer's Association has a wonderful program um, to help you in that regard. And then we tell you to create a safe box. At the end of the presentation we say, have a box of something that your loved one will recognize and remember and love and treasure. Something that they like to go through for them to keep their memories intact. And then create a room for yourself as a caregiver with a big do not disturb sign in the front, stop sign, whatever you want. And when the time is needed, go into that room, close the door, take a deep breath and say, I can do this and I will have another day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Isn't that terrific? I mean, so one of the things that you, 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 I've actually suggested this to people, just take this presentation and just go room by room in your house and just imagine to yourself what you could do just to improve your own house. Just kind of reimagine it as a place that would be really safe if you were having trouble remembering or if you were suffering from some of these, some of these, these, these perception problems and other problems that are really connected to dementia. Um, and, and, and imagine how much safer that house can be. Right? And going back to something that Sandy said, remember kind of thematically throughout this that if you're the caregiver, the worst thing you can do is kill yourself, right? Because if you die, your spouse is then in really big trouble. I mean, you're dead, so your problems are over, but your spouse now is alone. So you, you want to make sure that you've taken care of yourself and that also you've made this place safe. So the question at this point is, so you've seen all of these things, and so we've talked about them, and if you're Frank and Mary, um, you've got to figure out how to pay for all that stuff, right? Now remember, if you're Frank and Mary, you've got a house, it's worth $400,000. You've also got cash, it's worth another $400,000. So you may feel, well, I can just dip into the cash, right? But what if you don't? What if you're, 70, you're Frank and Mary and you're 70 years old and you say, I want to keep a reserve on hand, but I want to make my house safe until I die. Well, in that case, you may want to consider a reverse mortgage. Now. A few words about reverse mortgages. I never, in general, recommend reverse mortgages to my clients, especially not people who are about to retire and are looking at the reverse mortgage as a way to subsidize the fact that their income has just dropped because now they're living on Social Security. That's a bad idea. On the other hand, if you're Frank and Mary and what you want is a pool of money that you can use to fix up your house, because that's the point, right? You're trying to live in your house until you die. So, but at the same time, you don't want to increase your monthly expenses because now you're on a fixed income and you don't want to dip into your savings because you're still young. Think about, in that situation, you may want to think about a reverse mortgage. So, about reverse mortgages. First, they're all the same. I mean, you see the ads, you know, and you hear the, the, all the you know, people promote these and they've got, this one's better. They're all basically the same. Their rates are about the same. And the reason for that is that they're all governed by the same rules because they're all HECM mortgages, so-called home equity conversion mortgages, HECM mortgages. They are all insured by the federal government. That's why the, these banks are willing to lend the money, even though on, through a reverse mortgage, the money that is being lent does not get paid back until after you die or sell the house. Instead, 
the monthly interest payments get added to the amount of the principal, right? So the banks would never lend these kinds of reverse mortgages because if you live to be a really long time, your house might be underwater. You might owe more than the value of the house. And so to encourage banks to do it, the federal government, um, the, the Federal Housing Administration guarantees the mortgage, guarantees that the banks won't lose money. And as a result of that, because they're doing that guarantee, they also set the rules. So there are a whole set of rules, and basically they're all about the same. So what I'm explaining to you pretty much is going to apply to every reverse mortgage. I'm not trying to push any particular reverse mortgage company. 